Welcome to Sermon Brainwave with me, Caroline Lewis. And me, Matt Skinner. And me, Joy J. Moore. The text for Monday, Thursday, which falls on March 28, 2024, are from Exodus chapter 12, 1 through 4, optional 5 through 10, and then 11 through 14. Our psalm is Psalm 116, 1 through 2, and then 12 through 19. The second reading is 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. And the gospel reading always for Monday, Thursday is John 13, verses 1 through 17. And then be sure to skip 18 through 31a and start with 31b to 35. Just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's a whole other thing in and of itself of the verses that are skipped. (laughs) And... um, uh, always verses that are very important and we can go there perhaps uh, or not but I I uh, was thinking about this text of course for our podcasting and doing a little bit of uh, rereading of uh, my favorite John theologian who happened to be my, also my uh, dissertation advisor Gail O'Day and she, uh, this, of course, this idea of, of Jesus engaging in an activity, right. That was, was typically for a servant welcoming, uh, but an act of welcoming people, right. The foot washing, welcoming people, act of hospitality, welcoming people into your, um, into your home after a travel. And, um, there's certainly right. All of those elements, right. Of an act, act of servanthood, uh, an act of, um, an act of hospitality. And, uh, but what, what she talked about, which really uh, helps, I think, to get at the pathos of this act of Jesus, which is why you do need to add verses or at least refer to them or recognize what happens in between the foot washing and the love commandment, is that this act of hospitality on the part of Jesus is... Jesus welcoming the disciples into his home, which is the dwelling with him and with God. And that, uh, and I, you know, I read that a long time ago or heard it from her or whatever, but I was so struck by that, right? That that's, this is not just an act, this is not only an act of hospitality, but a specific specific act of hospitality where Jesus is, it's culminating of what Jesus has offered throughout his entire ministry of, of the, bringing people into this deep, intimate relationship, this abiding this dwelling, this homeness with God and with with himself. And, uh, and then Jesus will go on in the farewell discourse to unpack what that means in terms of in my father's house, there are, there are many menes, right? Abides or abiding places or abodes. Um, that it's not a, and so that home, <laughs> right, is not a house or a mansion, but it's that, that's that place that is resting on the very breast of God, the breast of Jesus. And so that's why I I don't say just add verses to add verses, but because in the verses that are left out, you get the first reference to the beloved disciple, 1323, who was reclining on the breast of Jesus, just as Jesus reclined on the, is on at the breast of God in chapter one verse 18. And it also points out the poignancy of Judas's betrayal that he has, he has rejected that invitation Mm -hmm. to, to, um, that, uh, to be in that homeness, that abide, that abode, that dwelling. And so it's not, so it really highlights then the betrayal of Judas even more. Uh, but, but, also the uh the the tension and the 
I'll just say pathos and poignancy of this night where who's to say no one else would walk away from this. And so that's why the the foot washing often for me is uh, you have to be you have to be really um, dexterous in this when it comes to if you if you skip the verses then the love commandment becomes only the act of foot washing and that is really you miss so much, so much. <laughs> when you do that so but, but what does it mean to 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 think of this foot washing as a, a, a one more way Jesus can act out, can embody this invitation of relationship. I really appreciate that. Thank you for that, Caroline. Um, I'm going to draw in more with what you were talking about in terms of Judas, uh, because uh, the writer here indicates that Jesus knew uh, and Yet Jesus washes his feet. Exactly. Yeah. And if we're going to be like Jesus, um, in what ways are we able to say, I've been told you're my enemy, or I know you're my enemy, but I'm going to do what is the godlike thing? Wow. Wow. Yeah, that yeah, skipping that makes yeah. that verse a little it makes it a lot lighter than it is in this full text. Well, and then also after, of course, the love commandment is Peter's denial. Yes. It's the foretelling of Peter's denial. So bracketing the love commandment is betrayal and denial. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. and that's what's at stake here. That's really what's at stake. Um and yet, as you said, Joy, Jesus, Jesus washes the feet of his betrayer and his denier. And his denier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does it mean for us? I guess in the sense, it, the hard word that Jesus gave us was not to love our neighbors. Mm. We use that language so much now. I think the hard word that Jesus gave us is to love our enemies. And I don't see us speaking that. And maybe, um, I don't know if I can get beyond that. Matt, can you get us out of that? Because uh, right now, that's a powerful word that I think is desperately needed in this moment. Uh, I, I can't get us, if, if I get us Not out to be of, heavy to you. <laughs> you mean like throw you a, an escape rope or something? Or, <laughs> yes. Or, I'm not going to diminish anything that was just said, that's for sure. I don't know. To me, it's uh, the the question of... I don't know, maybe I'll move us to the commandment, right? So a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one, love one another. So it's the just as mm -hmm. that is, that makes that difficult. <laughs> yes. So I can say, oh yeah, I love people. Um, but the just as is, is the quali it qualifies it in ways that we need to explore. What makes it new is also a huge question for me. It's not new in the sense that Again, the Old Testament has love of neighbor emblazoned yeah, all over it. Right. So it's not new. It's not a Christian commandment, except in the sense that somehow Christ has enfleshed this kind of love in a way that might not be new as much as it's unseen before or fresh or now in a different way. And so to see it as more than just humility, rubbing dirt off of somebody's you know dusty feet, or the kind of thing that you were talking about, Carolina, is an actual welcoming into. But then to be doing that as God makes <laughs> makes our foot washing ceremonies pale in comparison to what He's actually enacting. Not saying right. don't do them or that they're somehow deficient, but just yeah. we need to remember what it what it looks like to have God wash your feet yeah. and have God welcome you into a home, and that that's the love that's at the heart of, that's the just as and the commandment. And so what that means for enemies, I think is worth exploring. Although most of us convince ourselves, we don't really have any enemies. It's just too negative a way of thinking, but for the people you really don't want to see walk into the door of your church this Sunday, because well, well, you really don't want to have to be in fellowship with them, with the Christians who might do that. Uh, so as well as enemies, strangers, mm -hmm. uh, outsiders, people that, you know, 
be great if we had a few people like that in our church, but it sure would be a lot of work if we had too many of them, you know, just kind of the, or in our country or our neighborhood, you know, and to really kind of provoke that. You'll get some angry emails on Friday morning, but well, Jesus had a bad Friday too, I guess. So there's that. Uh, I guess so. There's that. I think, I think too, just, just to unpack this even further and um, that having loved his own, this is, you know, 13, one um, who were in the world, he loved them to the end, which is um, ace telos there and, you know, love most, love them utmostly or fully to the utmost. That's also what we're talking about here. And there's, it's no accident that that telos then is Jesus' last word on the cross, only in a verb form. Right. It is finished, or it has been brought to <laughs> its utmostness, or or that 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 love is then fully recognized in, uh, right. in, uh, of clearly in the resurrection and the ascension, but the but that love of, of of becoming human, and that what that which becomes human must die. And so a lot of connections there too. So there's so there's such a deep level of um, the kind of love that Jesus is talking about here is what is, is (laughs) although I will not, although I will say though, and I've talked about this before, but there is a, and I maybe it helps with the love one another piece a little bit for me because the there are parallels here uh, between uh, the foot washing and then Jesus' own feet being washed by Mary, and chapter twelve in the in the anointing, uh, same verb of wipe and and the abundance of love that she expresses to Jesus. And so I've talked about this before that it's it's being loved himself, that he carries that love forward to this moment. And so then as the disciples are loved, how do they carry that love? And so Mm. there's a mutuality, reciprocity that Jesus himself has already experienced that he's trying then to pass on, if you will. That's that's a pretty lame verb in this case, but um, to to show his disciples so that they then... (laughs) Um, show this abundant love as Mary did, as Jesus is. Um, and um, when you think about G- Mary's own expression of love, loving him into his death, right? Loving him into the inevitability wow. of what's going to happen. Uh, and that it's, you know, that it's, 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 you know, it's that act, right? That, uh, <clears throat> that then, um, it, that Jesus, as I said, that Jesus then carries forward, and it's, um, it's, and it's her act of anointing him that that, and the very next, um, the very next story is the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So how is it that Jesus can walk into Jerusalem without carrying that love with him? Um, is, and how is it the disciples can? get through this night and what is to come without carrying the love that they receive from Jesus. Mm-hmm. Well, we should probably move on, but there you that have was, it. Well. <laughs> so, um, or, or you can do communion, <laughs> which is, or the last supper, which is not in John. It's not. It's yeah, not. There's a supper, but it's not, it's not, not the Passover pe- and it's not, it's not the central act for John is the foot washing. Exactly. That's not true for the other gospels, and and of course we get First Corinthians, so we can move there. I there's so much. <laughs> I guess the context that we get uh, this uh, First Corinthians uh, kind of keeps the weight of the moment. Um, this portion that we read sounds so much like uh, the uh, liturgy that we're familiar with, um, but the context uh, of just this is something that I received, and mm. we, we we participate in something that others are doing in the name of Jesus around the world. Mm. You know, you know. Um, mm. There's there's always something to me about that 
familiarity of the liturgy that reminds me that this is happening all over the world where people worship Jesus Christ. Um, and and it, it's that welcoming idea uh, that you were talking about of, you know, the master washing our feet, uh, of entering into uh, God's home, uh, of lying on the breast of Jesus, uh, that I am at this banquet table that is not just my little church, my the few folks that show up for Maudie Thursday, um, my little denomination, my little nation. But this is generations of people who have received this good word. I think, I think reading that with that kind of uh, gravity uh, might make uh, the communion service uh, feel the weight of John's foot washing. Yeah, I like that too. I think the uh, you know the Paul's version here of the words of institution, like you said, this is passed on. Paul is very much within the larger traditions of his church. He's not inventing stuff all by himself, right? And here we've got the familiar body and blood language. But then verse twenty six: As often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, which has. I think in a lot of churches I go to now has become part of the, the the liturgy kind of after the presentation of the the bread and the wine, you go to this. I also hear it changed a lot. People don't always know what to do with you proclaim the Lord's death. People always want to death and resurrection or you proclaim right. the Lord's death and salvation or you proclaim forgiveness of sin or Christ's love. So I just, I just find that interesting, especially on a night like tonight or a day like today, Monday, Thursday, that the, there is nothing in the rubric, nothing in the narratives that points to a resurrection in this meal. Points to sustenance and feeding and sharing and all of that. This is a this is a story about a, a death, which I just find interesting because it makes us uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't yeah. quite know what to do with that except to point out we don't like telling the story of the death without resurrection hope. And I think Paul would agree with that, but that's, I find that interesting here. That's part of the rubric. And if um, you're, if I, if I could just interrupt, uh, if you're moving through this week, you want to pause here and proclaim the death. Yeah. Well, and I think too, I mean, not, uh, it, particularly as we remember what is the context, as you were talking about joy of Paul, uh, uh, care of naming what's been handed down to him about what is the Lord's Supper in terms of it, you know the the context of the Corinthian church. Some are reading more and before, and so it's in the context of this division, uh, right. and, and 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 gathering for the Lord's Supper in in un unjust ways. So then, therefore, the you proclaim the Lord's death takes on. A different kind of meaning as well. Like this yeah. is, you're not just getting together and having a meal. You're, 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 you're acknowledging that the death of Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus is, uh, is the marker of your, of your faith, uh, against all, against all principles and all principalities who would say otherwise. And so I think that also gets at kind of what we're, what we're, what, what, are what we're trying to get at for this night, right? It, this is oh, let's share, you know, Jesus. Let's share a meal together, and uh, or you know, the the but but there's so much here that is that is um, naming, you know, naming the the significance of Jesus' death in a way that uh, do we do we acknowledge that, and uh, and particularly you know particularly going forward after Easter. Um, what, what, how is it that we act out, act out the meaning of the crucifixion and it, and speak about the meaning of the crucifixion beyond, you know, beyond, uh, beyond Sunday. Well, and again, it matters if we see the, the us here as not just the beneficiaries of Jesus' death, but also the agents of it. Yes. People who bear yes. responsibility for it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes is a very important reminder. It's not just a morbid fascination with death and suffering. It's mm. it's a call to our own confession and, and repentance also, which is one of the things that's odd about, you know, there's a lot of things I think are odd, although I understand why it happens, why the Exodus story, why the Passover story is assigned to this day that I think Jesus is celebrating a Passover meal of sorts in, in the synoptics. But I also don't think that Passover is a Christian holiday. I don't think that Christians should be hosting Passover seders. We can now take another podcast to talk about. But to, to talk about how Jesus is deeply embedded in the tradition about, uh, about a God who delivers. Mm-hmm. Is maybe all that needs to be said. I think Beth Tanner says, just tell, make sure you tell the story, make sure people know the story, that they know where all of this comes from uh, as well, if you decide to go that route. But if you're going to add verses to John, you're running out of time, so you might want to cut up <laughs> something like that. <laughs>